Premiere takes a little bit to learn, but in maybe just a short couple of hours, you can be dragging video and audio into your timeline, putting some effects on things, making some transitions and hitting render. There are a couple of things though, that as a more advanced user will benefit you to speeding up your workflow. And the two things I wanna talk about today, there are master levels of video clips and audio tracks that may help you in the long run. Hey, welcome to Pull My Focus Adventures in the World of Digital Filmmaking. First, let's talk about what I mean by master level of video clips. So when you drag a video to the timeline, as we are here, if I take this video here and I drag it to the timeline, we're just gonna drop it right here, okay? As you can see, it's one particular, uh, it's one particular scene. It's a full scene right there of a woman making up someone to make up. Now, if I start to clip that, if I start to put that in the timeline, like I have it here, I have it interspersed between this just shot of a glass that Frank was filling up and it's spliced up. You can see it's cut. So we did, we did a bunch of cuts here. Okay. Now, your typical editor would say, oh, okay, well, let's let's do some color. Let's do some color work to this. So I'm gonna switch to my, just so you guys can see, I'm gonna switch to my color workspace. We go color, boom. Now we're in our color workspace. And I do a whole video about color. You can check it out on the channel, uh, but that we won't deep dive too deep into this. We just wanna add some color to this. So I'm in my curves and let's go to, uh, I'm on this clip, let's go to, uh, let's see, uh, Luma versus Saturation. I wanna bring the saturation down on the clip. So I'm gonna bring the saturation down to about there. It felt a little too saturated to me. And what else? Well, let's do one other thing. Let's do go to our basic and maybe increase the contrast. I don't know, what the heck. Okay, that's all we did. All right, great, great work. Now, let's continue. We go to the next clip. And then once we get to the next clip, but wait a minute, wait a minute. All the work I did on this clip is not in this clip. So a beginner would say, all right, well, let me go to this clip again. I'm gonna switch back to my editing workspace. Okay, uh, let's go back to editing. So I'm gonna go to this clip and I'm gonna look at the effect controls. And here is the Lumetri. I'm gonna copy this and then I'm gonna paste it here. But when I hit another clip, well, it keeps happening over and over again. This is where you uh, could utilize the master level of the clip. And the master level, if you've never noticed, whenever you click on a clip, you'll see it highlighted right up here, right up at the top. But there's another one called the source that's next to it. So if I click on this, uh, oops, I clicked too, too hard. If I click on this guy here, nothing shows up. And that's because it's the source level of that clip. Here's what I mean. It's easier to see than, than to, to talk about. If I grab this Lumetri color now, I just highlight it and I go Command X on a Mac, or Control X on a Windows machine to cut it from here. I go to the source level here and I paste it in. Boom, I pasted it in. Notice two things happen. Number one, well, our view now shows that Lumetri uh, setting, okay? So now that's in there. Another thing happened is this dash here showed up on the clip. That dash means, hey, there's something on the master level of this particular clip. And watch this. Every time we go, we cut away, we come back, we still have our effects. Cut away, come back. Our effects are still there. Go away, come back. It'll be more prominent actually if I do this. So I'm gonna highlight this clip. Notice the Lumetri is not here because it's not on the clip level. It's on the master level. If I click on the master level and I grab this Lumetri, let's see, let's go to creative and pull the saturation completely down. Uh, let's go to saturation and pull it completely down to black and white. Every time we hit this clip now, it's in black and white. It's in black and white. It's in black and white. So what makes this useful is that if you have a long string of a clip, a long shot on a camera, and you wanna color correct that shot, instead of putting the effect on the clip, put it on the master level, and that will affect the entire clip. Now, mind you, if you do 
if you change, you know, uh, a lighting in between a, in during a shot, or if you change, or if the shot changes dramatically, this may not be the best way for you to do it. But if you have one locked off camera, um, like this shot is, then you can cover the whole clip without having to worry about where the segments of the clip go. All right. Here's another trick in using the same uh, the same example. All right. We're here. We're on this glass. Well, I feel like it's shot too wide. And what we'll do sometimes is when I say we in Pixel Valley, what we'll do is we'll shoot a little wider than we need so we can crop in. So we do have some flexibility in the edit. This one is way too wide. So I'm gonna go and look at my uh, effects that are born with every clip. I always say this, the, the effect is born with every clip, right? Motion, opacity, and timing wrapping. Whenever you drop um, a, a, a video down on the timeline, you're gonna have these things. There's no way to get above it. There's no way to change, they're gonna be there. So if I scale this up, let's do 150% scale and let's change it and let's frame it like this and let's move this, well, let's frame it like that. Okay, great. That's how I want it to be framed every time I see this clip. Well, once again, we're in the same trouble, right? We have, boom, when I go to another shot of it and it's already on the timeline, it's gonna be back to normal. But wait, Manu, but that's a scale effect. I can't copy, let me see, if I go motion, copy, come to the source like you told me to do, um, come to the source, paste, oh, I, you can't, you can't, how, what do I do? How do I take this stuff? This is where one little hidden, hidden effect that I didn't know was there until well into my career premiere, it's called distort. We're gonna reset this. Let's reset this puppy right here. Boom, boom, let's just take all this up. Also to reset, you could just right click on it and say, uh, remove attributes. And then you can select all the attributes you wanna remove. That'll reset the clip to normal. We're gonna use distort. So let's go, uh, actually, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, we're gonna look for distort. And under distort, you're gonna see transform. So the group is called distort. It's under video effects, you're gonna see transform. So let's just grab that and drag it. Right now we're gonna drag, drag it to the clip. And I'll show you why we drag it to the clip initially. So let's just drag it to the clip. Now, although this transform can't exist above the normal natural transform of the clip, you can manipulate this transform. So once again, I'm gonna to go to 150% scale. Boom. I'm gonna to go to position and the transform has a lot more features than the born with kind of stuff, like a skew. It has features like a skew, look at that. It also has features like, um, you know, there's a bunch There's a bunch more things you can do in the transform, but nonetheless, let's move the position and let's frame it kind of like we did before. And I'm gonna move the position here. Boom, that's our framing, great. Now, like you say, right? Okay, if I go to this one, well, it's not done, but we can take this transform, we can cut it, we can go to the source, and now that transform kind of precedes, it actually does precede the transform that's built into the clip because it's on the master level now. So now every time we go to that shot, it is transformed the way we want it. Do we? Now let's go to audio. There's uh, uh, another thing, another master audio, another master uh, level, it's called a master track. If you look down on your timeline right here, you'll see one final timeline called mix. And the way you can use mix is, let's go to our audio space workspace right now. Okay, I'm gonna go to audio workspace, great. And now that allows us to see more audio based things. And these workspaces come with Premiere, they actually work really well. If you're a beginner, use the workspaces. If you're more advanced, then you can create a workspace. I actually have a three screen workspace that kind of touches all these things, so I don't have to keep switching. But I wanna show you guys what's in your package guaranteed. Okay, normally you will see, uh, notice how it highlighted audio track mixer. All right, and it highlighted this stuff. Normally to get to the audio track mixer, I'd have to go to window and then go to audio track, audio track mixer like that. Okay, but when you're in the audio workspace, you get to see it. And then this usually looks like this, but if you come up to this little pivot here, right here, this is the show hide effects and sends, you will get, boom, a whole panel of blank, blankness right now. Let's blank right now, but we'll, we'll fix that. Okay, the master track very simply is the final track to uh, manipulate audio before it goes to the render. 
okay? Here's a great example. I have、uh, a bunch of stems from Epidemic Sound, and they have been、uh, stems are basically the breakdown of the audio track. So it's the drums, the bass, whatever melody, whatever vocals. There, the, you can get them in the stem format so that you can remove things and add things, okay? Once again, we do an entire se- section, an、uh, entire video series on mastering audio, and there are a lot of,、um, a lot of videos on the channel about audio. But to keep it simple, I can play this right now. Right? Now you can see, I'm gonna pull this over because we really don't need to see,、um, see the video. Now you can see we, we have audio on all these tracks, right? You have bass, drums, instruments, melody, and then you have mix. But notice, mix, this means we clipped. This means we went louder than we need to. And that's because I'm using four tracks that were not kind of. Mastered. So when they all play at the same time, you could go over zero dB and clip. Okay, so how do we fix that? Well, one way to fix it, and one way to illustrate what the mix or the, the master audio is, is you can put effects on this master track. This is the mix track. Remember, this is the track down here, all at the bottom. You can't drag anything to it. If I tried to drag something, it doesn't work. You're not going to drag anything to it, but you can put effects on it.、And、one effect I can use is if I hit this button right here, go to amplitude and compression, go to multi band compressor.、Um, and to put it simply, a compressor is a way to kind of keep the dynamic range of、uh, audio from going outside of a certain range. I'll keep it that simple.、Um, but with a multi band compressor, now what I can do is I can set it to, they, they have presets, which are nice. If I right click on that, I can go to preset and say, I don't know, classic master. That's like a nice, gentle mastering of the audio. And、uh, so when I play it now, I don't have to worry too much about this going in the red because this compressor, I can bring it up too so you can see, this compressor is kind of handling all of the tracks. All right. So that peaked a little. I can pull this back. This gain here, this is the master gain. This gain also is accessible through this dial here, also. So I can pull this gain down. Let's pull it down to like negative four. Reset that. Now, even though, even though if a single track clips or shows red here, my master track doesn't show that.、And、that's because it's being handled all the. There you go, right there, that's clipping. But the master is still just fine, cruising along. And that's a very simple way of showing you that it's similar to the video, right?、Um, you can deal with the master clip and put things on that. Here, we're dealing with the master final chain of the audio signal, which is、uh, the mix track. And so, if you know how to manipulate the mix track, You can take every single track and change them in some kind of weird way. Let's do something really drastic just to get you a really good example. If I go filter and I go high pass filter, notice that every single track now. is affected. So that's something that you should be aware of. Your master tracks for your audio and your master levels for your clips. So, I hope that was entertaining. I hope that was informative. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.